Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for, for coming back after the break to, to listen to this, the second session. Um, so, uh, as for, for those who aren't familiar with Energy, Energy Systems Catapult, um, we're a not-for-profit organisation um, based in Birmingham, um, set up by Innovate UK, but we are independent from the government. Um, we're part of a network of nine um, catapult centres, um, which are distributed geographically across the UK, and in, in terms of their themes, they are distributed across um, key sectors of uh, industry and innovation. Um, from our point of view, uh, we take a whole systems view on all parts of the energy system, um, and our mission is to unleash innovation and open new markets to capture the clean growth opportunity. And as part of this, we have a strong belief that digitization and data openness will play a key role in the clean energy transition. Um, so in the five minutes I have now, I'll give a brief overview of some of our work in this area. So as a starting point, we are involved in a broad range of work around energy system models and model-based systems engineering. Um, so as was touched on this morning, uh, we recognise that the, the energy system isn't just the physics, it has to be grounded in the physics and the physical assets that exist, um, but there are many more layers beyond that. And so we use um, model-based systems engineering techniques to analyse uh, the different entities that exist and their interactions, and furthermore to design potential ways in which um, new uh, new models of operation um, might come to pass in order to um, to, to smooth the way to, to meeting our net zero obligations. Um, and in support of that, we build and operate a variety of models of aspects of the energy system, um, ranging in uh, time scales from seconds up to, to multiple decades, um, and in geographical scales from an individual house up to the whole of the United Kingdom. And through doing this, um, we've developed data pipelines uh, which allow our models to replicate the, the detailed characteristics of different, um, different parts of the UK and, and other um, geographies as well. Um, and in order to, to play those characteristics forward in time um, to predict the impacts of, of future scenarios. A second uh, key part of our work is Step or stems from our involvement in the Energy Data Task Force. Um, so this was a review um, commissioned by government in 20, 2019 um, into the ways in which data is and could be used in the energy system. Um, again, picking up on points that were raised this morning, uh, one of the key findings, as, as attendees may be aware, um, is the the or the, the direction that data should be presumed open where possible. Um, so clearly we recognise that not all data can be made um, publicly available um, and, and so um, either for reasons of um, commercial confidentiality or for, for privacy. Um, however, um, what, we, what we argue is that um, where possible it should be it should be open, it should be presumed open as a starting point and even where it is not possible to fully open the data set, um, data should be catalogued uh, using uh, recognized metadata frameworks and um, it to, to allow uh, discoverability of data, um, to allow potential data users to, uh, to know that data exists as a starting point, which is often a stumbling block um, at present, um, and then to be able to work towards a more interoperable system. Uh, and Following on from our involvement in this report, uh, we're working with a number of organisations in the sector, um, such as network operators, um, in order to, to take practical steps um, towards opening their, their data sets. Um, in a similar vein, uh, we're also working on um, the development of standards uh, with the British Standards Institute um, to ensure that um, there is interoperability um, between future energy services um, and smart con consumer products. Um, so we are contributing to, to these publicly available specifications um, for uh, energy smart appliances and for demand side response. Um, and these, these are also using open ontologies um, to allow 
um, behavior and services to be to be defined in a machine readable form. And finally, bringing together these strands of work as as well as others, um, we are currently developing a, a new facility to to allow for um, close to real world prototyping of um, future energy system approaches. Again, spanning not only the physical side, uh, but also some of the layers that sit on top of that, such as the, the control systems, the digital infrastructure, and ultimately the, the business processes and markets that, um, that facilitate the transactions between actors. Um, so we call this the, the whole energy systems accelerator. And we're working um, with um, the Power Networks Demonstration Center in Strathclyde, um, who have uh, physical simulators of energy um, energy network assets. We're combining that um, via a digital link with our living lab of domestic properties with, um, with, with real consumers um, living in them and making use of energy services um, to combine, combined with digital models of future markets and uh, future control approaches and future business processes to allow those to, to be explored and trialed um, in, in a fully digital way and without putting, uh, putting infrastructure at risk in the real world.